and today we are going to be doing a restoration project on my Macintosh TV. And if you're wondering when I got this, you should have seen my last video, the unboxing the mysterious computer. This is the mysterious computer I was talking about. It was supposed to be like a surprise for like a of like a rare computer, and this is a rare computer. I'm excited. And um, ba and basically, it was supposed to like be something that people would be interested in to get interested in to get more views, but it failed. Probably failed. So yeah, but this is like maybe a five minutes after I've uploaded that video. But yeah, so we're going to be restoring the restore cleaning and restoring this um, computer because as you can see, it is filthy. It might not show up that well on camera, but um, yeah. So let's get to it. So. Um, because this is not a beige computer, we don't have to do any retro bright, which I'm quite thankful for. Um, I did get a new um, bottle of rubbing alcohol and um, just have these normal tissues. But um, yeah, I do have some electronic wipes, like these special wipes that you can use to wipe the screens of electronics and it doesn't leave like any streaks. Like you know that little, little annoying marks at the normal wipes makes. Well, these wipes don't, so I'm going to go get them, and we're going to start the restoration project. So, yeah, let's get started. What I would like to mention is that this computer works. It's just I'm not going to be turning it on just yet because there's no reason to. Um, as you can see, this keyboard, everything is very filthy. There's There are different marks everywhere. Screen's disgusting. Annoying part, there's, a, there's some words and letters engraved into here. And I don't know if I can get them out, but I'll see what I can do. Mouse is quite dirty. The problem with this is that this is one of the newer mice that don't have any screws. I'm not exactly sure how to take it apart, but I don't think I will be. We'll have to. All I'm just probably going to do is just take out the ball. Um, keyboard is filthy. Some disgusting stuff in there. Cables are dusty, and the um, connectors are gross, too. Um, badge could use a little cleaning. Moving over to the side, um, there's some white scuff here. It's a bit strange. Um, more white scuffs. Um, the connectors on the back. I don't know if you can see them, but um, they um, they are a bit. Um, they are quite dusty and dirty. And um, when I tried plugging my Pac-Man machine into it, the quality wasn't the best. And um, even on a TV, the quality. A newer, an older TV, the quality looks better. I suspect that it's just that these pit, these um, pit, these um, uh, connectors are a bit dirty, and that's what's causing it. But um, otherwise, it should be fine. Vents are maybe a bit dusty. I'll try cleaning them. Uh, more disgusting stuff. Um, the fan has some dust in it. But yeah, so that's basically the computer. Things I'm going to be using is this bottle of alcohol, this um, roll of paper towels, and um, the electronic wipes once I get them upstairs. So yeah, let's get to the restroom. We're going to be starting off with the keyboard and mouse because these are probably the dirtiest parts. So these are the wipes I was talking about. They're Windex electronic right wipes. They have no residue and they're streak-free shine, and they're good for, for TVs. Um, cell phones and computers this is both of those things TVs and computers so I guess that's pretty good for me anyway so we're gonna start small and work our way up with the keyboard and mouse so yeah let's get started I think I'm gonna start off with the paper ta the um, standard paper towel and um, alcohol it's um, never ever spray this right onto the computer or whatever always spray it on the paper towel and then rub it on like i'm doing here so yeah let's get started so this is coming off relatively easy if that's the original color then this thing must be filthy because as you can see there's a huge difference that's it's probably just because it's wet that's why it's this color but if that's the original color then boy is this thing filthy and this thing will look awesome when i'm done there isn't that much coming off I'm going to have to get in there with a screwdriver and some other things. I'm going to start off with the outside, and if there's still some stuff, I'm going to continue with some more methods. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not that, that's not the original color, that really. Anyway, 
I'm going to continue with the palm rest, usually the, one of the dirtiest parts, and the space bar, the most used key on a computer. I wonder what this computer did in its past life. Probably just a home computer. Maybe it was someone's work computer and they'd watch football games during work. Hmm. It's not actually such a bad idea. Okay. Seems to be coming clean relatively easy. There are some gaps and stuff that I'll have to get pretty soon. Um, all right. I'm gonna do this now. All right, that paper towel is finished. Um, up next, we're going to like, um, basically what we're gonna do now is So I learned this method from another YouTuber. Basically what, uh, basically what you do is you get a flat tip screwdriver such as this. And what you do is you, um, you get some paper towel, maybe a little more than this, but um, spray, you know, do that. Um, well, yeah, it's like this and um, spray a little more. Yeah, it's something like this. So you put it over here and then you can like put it in between the grooves of the key keyboard keys. And yeah, it cleans up really relatively well. Or you could just do it like this. It's better with the screwdriver. Um, this might take a really long time. This thing's filthy. And I want this clean and looking sharp. Um, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need a bigger amount of paper towel than this. All right, but yeah, that's my guy. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse because you guys are probably gonna be bored of looking at this. So yeah, time lapse. <laughs> Get the screwdriver and paper paper towel method. If you want to spend lots of money on paper towels and waste 20 hours of 20 hours of your life cleaning up a keyboard in such a slow way, um, just get used Q-tips. I totally forgot about them. They're so much easier. You can really get in there with them, and you're and you're not wasting as much material as you are with the paper towels. So yeah. So yeah. Perfect. Much easier. And you can, and if you like, really put some force in here, places like here, you can really get the gunk out of there easily. So then eventually the Q-tip adapts. Ugh, gunk seems to be coming back after cleaning it up. Okay. And also you can use the second side if the first side gets like all ruined or whatever. Caps lock key. I'm not going to do anything. You know what, I think I'll just fill up a cup with, um, uh, I think I'll just fill up a little container with um, rubbing alcohol and then just dip the Q-tips in. So yeah, let's do that. I got this cup and um, where's my rubbing alcohol? There it is. Rubbing alcohol. So this is my recommendation. Get a bunch of Q-tips and some rubbing alcohol in a little cup and then dip them in there. And yeah. Better than that annoying spray bottle. That's just stupid. Anyway, now time to put time. Keyboard is done. Let's move on to the mouse. I'm pretty sure this will probably be the easiest one. Because all we have to do is just clean this Apple logo in here. Yeah, it's pretty clean. And, uh, probably the ball. So let's take the ball out. If it won't want to come out. Okay, it does. Ball is being happy. It's basically like a big rubber ball. I think it's, like, got some metal in there because they're pretty heavy and sturdy. I'm pretty sure it's metal with some rubber on the outside. So, let's clean this up with a paper towel to see how dirty it is. Usually these balls are extremely dirty because... They go everywhere that the 
computer mouse goes. So let's see. So it seems the ball is a bit dirty, but not as dirty as I, as I expected, but it seems to be fine. Probably probably take this opportunity to clean like the insides of the you know what the insides look pretty clean the balls pretty clean insides are pretty clean we're all happy all right that's good all right so now let's move on to the um connectors of the cables as you can see here like even the, over here let's see how this is so That's good. Seems to be good too. Cables don't really need cleaning because those things don't really show up because it's black, which I'm happy about. Let's try this other side. Also, the apple logo should probably be cleaned a bit. There, clean as a whistle. That seems to be good. Still at the other side of the Q-tip. Let's clean up this button. Seems to be good too. All right. Um, that's good. Um, all right. Um, I guess everything on here is pretty much clean. Okay, let's clean up this cable because there is some noticeable junk. Because there's some noticeable gunk on the mouse cable, so let's clean that up. Alright, let's unplug this. And there we go. Let's see how much dirt. Ew, that's disgusting. Now that that's done, now I'm, I'm tempted to clean the keyboard cable. I'm also probably going to clean up the power cable, too. I don't think I've ever put that... Um, I don't think I've ever put so much... This much love in a computer before. Maybe it's because this computer's rare. I don't know. Because maybe it has historical value. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's got some dust collecting up in it. The reason they made these um curly is so that they don't tangle easily like phone cords. And they do a pretty good job. Not as dirty as the mouse. I expect the mouse um, cable to be more dirty because it's always moving around a lot. Alright, so now that the keyboard and mouse is, are finished, let's finally move on to the main attraction. This yucky power cable. So... Um, yeah, so, yeah, this is pretty disgusting. Um, it might be because it has these white, um, numbers and letters on it. It's got copper in it, cool. I'm not taking it apart, though. It's on copper everywhere, especially on old pennies. You could just melt old pennies down and sell the copper for more than the pennies are worth. Ever considered that, people? Instead of destroying something valuable like this that someone's actually going to use, go do that instead. Although I don't recommend it because you could get in serious trouble if you're caught and you try selling the copper. Okay, that's disgusting. Let's use a Q-tip to get these grooves at the back. I'm not that. I'm not entirely sure that this is the original power cable but it seems that it seems like it is i mean usually um something that apple does is is put brand their their power cables with their logo on it yeah i don't know let's look at here all right all clean now the power cable is out of the way 
Now we can actually move to the main attraction. Let's start off with the screen, because that's probably the most critical part. Well, not really, actually. Um, okay, let's just take a wipe. All right. These just work like normal wipes, just rub them on here. And yeah. Hmm. Might be a scuff or two, I don't know. Clean up the IR receiver. There is a chance that the IR receiver or the remote doesn't work, I don't know, but it might be one of those. All right. Um, I'm gonna use the wipe. There's some dust here. I think I'll have to use a Q-tip for that. No worries, I have a whole bag of Q-tips. Perfect. Perfect, excellent. Ew, that is disgusting. It's the most disgusting part ever. Let's use the other side of this q -tip. Wonder if I can get these white scuffs off. I have a suspicion that it might be um, the paint coming off, but I really hope it's not. But let's try anyway, after I clean up this badge. All right, let's um, see. All right, so I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol because it's gonna be more effective. I'm saving the wipe because it's not that dirty yet. I only this I only um dispose of things when they're critically dirty. All right, so let's try with um let's try with this scuff over here. As you can see here, there's a scuff. There's a scuff up here. Let's see if we can get it off. If we can, then that just means it's paints or something. I don't know. Seems to be coming off. Yeah, it's not paint. Almost gone. There we go, all gone. Clean. Alright, so I guess these aren't scuffs, like, that they're damaging the paint, rather that they're just strange white scuffs. For example, whatever it hit was probably, like, a white color. Ew, look how dirty that is. Um, but yeah, that's a good sign. So I'm gonna put this to time lapse until uh, an important part. So right, guys, so I cleaned everything up. I didn't get it all on camera because my because my phone ran out of battery, and I and it was kind of wasting space. So yeah, we um so I did clean up the um, VGA ports, and I kind of want to see if the picture quality will will change. Because they were a bit dusty and they had some sort of miscellaneous gunk on them that was easily I was easily able to get off. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it was not rust or battery acid of any kind. But yeah, we're just gonna um, see what, what what we can do. Hmm. Is it even turned on? Yeah, it seems to be turned on. Plugged in? Why isn't it doing anything? I need to clean the pit, the... There we go. Perfect. All right, working. I guess you have to keep it plugged in and, and the power switch on for a while for it to turn on. But yeah, it seems to be working fine still. Making a, a high pitched whine. Hmm. It seems to be working though. Not sure what that whine is. It's fine. Let's let it. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm going to um, stop the video here and then once it's. 
start it up, I'm going to resume the video and try out the, um, you Guys, after course. that cleaning, the picture quality seems to be exactly the same it was before. It's not the greatest picture quality I've ever seen on an old TV. Um, it's just a bit fuzzy and doesn't really look right. It might be the batteries on my, um, uh, um, plug and play Pac-Man machine, but I doubt it because I just replaced them like a month ago and I haven't been using this at all. But maybe, I don't know. Sound is pretty fine. Hmm. It's a bit weird the screen. It keeps doing the. It keeps flickering a bit and then it keeps like changing colors sort of sometimes. I don't know why. Hmm, it's a bit weird. Maybe there might be something loose in there, like a cable or, a, or one of the analog board components. I don't know. Maybe. Because one thing that I did notice is that, like, on the edge, there's, like, there's, like, this greenish stuff. And then down here, there's, no, there's just black. Eh, who knows? Could be anything. I don't know. But these usually have problems, so I shouldn't expect it to last that long, but otherwise, it's pretty good. I like it. So, now that this has been, now that, um, now that I have cleaned this computer, it is time to, um, end the video. Right, guys, this is a couple days after I've done some of the clips you've already seen, but I decided that I should, um, just, um, clean up this logic board because when I was taking out the PRAM battery it looked pretty dusty so I decided to do that. Also, I did see a bit of rust in the chassis, especially in this one particular area. I want to see if there were any capacitor leaks or anything so I'm going to try and clean that up with the dust. I also want to see what's inside this tuner card. So yeah, I have all the appropriate tools and things to clean it up with so yeah we're gonna get started I'm probably gonna do a time lapse on the cleaning phase and um, then I'm gonna do real time on opening this up also the way to get this out it's very simple and easy I really like it basically up here are these pins and basically what happens is so it goes in here and you have to let you pull it out you have to wiggle it a bit and put some force into it but not too much force and then it comes out I also see this the one look and lonely ram stick stick a ram see if I can get that out yeah this is eight megabytes I believe it's pretty bad for a computer of the 90s which is one reason why this failed and the ROM chips are here hmm interesting I'm probably gonna clean up all clean all this up so yeah let's get started with the uh, time lapse I've pretty much cleaned up the board. Just gotta dry it a bit. Um, let me just get a dry Q-tip and get in there. Um, I decided to not take out the RAM, the ROM chips just yet. Maybe I'm, I might do that later. But I feel I don't feel like it's such a big problem. So yeah, but I might do it later. So I want to take out this TV tuner card because. Technically, it looks like it's not um, exactly soldered in. It looks more like a expansion card or something like that. So basically, what I saw on the bottom was this little tab that you have to twist. But like, I wish I had my pliers, but I don't. Twist it like, eh. Kind of need my pliers, but yeah, probably you're supposed to like twist it. And you can just pull it right out. So, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's how you have to do it. So, yeah, let me look at my pliers and uh, pliers. Let's so, let's do this. Pretty sure the reason this exists is because I'm not too sure, but 
probably for cosmetic reasons, for example, so it just doesn't like jiggle around a lot. Yeah, so there we go. Just jiggle it out carefully. Perfect. Technically, I don't really need this um, part of the computer because I usually only use the composite outputs, but let's take a closer look at this um, TV tuner. This isn't really a useful thing nowadays because, mainly because cable TV is like the only type of TV that people actually use. Um, should sort of be able to get this thing out. Or no, is it? Might be um, held in place with a um, bracket or something. I don't know, but let's see. Oh no, that comes out. So bend this a bit. Okay. Move a bit. Oh, need to pry this up a bit. There we go. That was just. Protective, I guess. No, that was supposed to hold it on here. Yeah, I can't open this. Or, yeah, that's just too much work to open. Um, yeah. So, passers look fine. Um, everything looks all clean. Sides under here. Yeah, it's quick to clean. Uh, yeah, it looks all fine. I think I'm gonna put this back because it um. I don't want there to be a hole in this, um, I don't want this hole to be present in this, um, area so the dust can come in. I mean, they're already bent, but those are supposed to be there. I don't want more dust to be able to get in there because, dust, I hate it. Everyone hates dust. It's not something you want or like. It's just the worst, so I'm going to figure out. So I guess I'm going to try and figure it out. So there is some rust in here. It's probably just from the moisture moist or something I don't know you usually see see um, rust in these older computers especially in the in these computers from the 90s okay um, ugh, a bit weird um okay so I guess you have to come at it like so Okay, good, got it. So now just push this in and it's all back in place, perfect. Hope I got it in the right way. Actually, there is no way to screw this up. Yeah, there's no way to screw this up. I mean, there was like an area over here where this went where there wasn't any rust, which is, I guess the area has been covered up by this. So yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, um, TV tuner looks fine. I'm really happy about that because um, I have been looking at someone's blog about how they got a $400 Mac TV like I did. And it came with like pretty much the exact same stuff, except his was in unknown condition. And then when he pulled it apart, um, all, it, it looked like all the capacitors had leaked all over the board. And I'm glad I got it, this thing working. I kind of feel bad because if this was probably out, he would have probably, if this computer was out for sale, he would have probably gotten it. But in the end, he um, just ended up replacing everything with a work from a working Mac for form of five, five seven five. So um, yeah. So all you just gotta do is turn that back. I'm probably never gonna take that out again unless I want to clean it. Ugh, I forgot to clean it. Oh well, I don't. Think it's such a problem. Um, yeah, it's, everything seems to be all clean. I think I'm gonna clean these. Um, Yeah, I think I'm gonna um, clean these ROM chips and clean them up and reseat them. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then we will see if this works afterwards and hopefully I didn't kill it. All right guys, so um, I pulled out this ROM chip, but then I bent the pins like really badly, but then I was able to put it back I was scared that the pins were gonna break, like when you bend a paper clip a lot and then it breaks. And I was really scared that that was gonna happen, so I just decided to put it back. I'm probably gonna wait until I have the proper tools to be able to do it. Like there are these things, ROM chip pullers, where you can pull out the ROM chips without bending the pins. So yeah, so my way with the screwdriver doesn't really work out that well. 
Um, I did have to take out the tu TV tuner card out again because I had to access the other side to be able to do the screwdriver trick. And I think I'm just gonna put it up a tiny bit and put it back because that usually just gets some gunk out. But yeah, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna be doing that until I get a proper tool. So yeah, I'm gonna put this board back together and, and into the computer, and then we'll see if I killed it or not. So yeah, let's do that. All right guys, so I just finished putting the board back in. So just something to note is that you do have to put a bit of force on the board, and then you have to wait for it so it goes completely in. And you have to make sure everything's straight and that the board goes in the grooves in the um, chassis. So, yeah, I plugged in the computer. Let's see if it turns on. Okay, I heard the chime. A bit quiet, but that's normal. I turned the volume down when I was playing Pac-Man. Okay, CRT is on. That's a good sign. Cursor. Come on. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. I hate you. I hate you. Really? Um, well, a few days ago this was like this, but then it did recover. I don't know if this will be permanent or not. This does happen sometimes. I don't know. Um, I really hope this isn't the end and I didn't do anything to it. Because finding a new hard drive for this, I mean, it's common, but they're usually expensive and they, may, they might not even work. But let's just see. Let's try turning it on one more time. It, the, the thing is, is that it has to make the popcorn sound, which signifies that the hard drive is spinning, and it has to make a lot more noise than just the fan going. But the logic board should be in there, because if it wasn't, there wouldn't be anything on the screen, because the logic board is what causes that symbol. A hard drive shouldn't be dead, because, I mean, it has happened before. It could be dying, but I, it can't be dead yet. I mean, all right. CRT is on, I heard the little zip, and the lights sort of flickered when I did it. That's normal in this house. All right. One more time. Let's see if this thing will work. All right. The logic board, the board seemed to be good because the green light is on. Okay, I hear it, that's good. That's a good sign. Hear it going. Yay! There we go. Usually it just, um, usually sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not dead. Hooray! So now we're, now it's back here. That's good. So, yeah, I want to test if the TV mode works and if the, um, Composite video outputs work too. So we're gonna wait for this to boot up. While it boots up, I'm gonna plug in my Pac-Man machine. This this computer is really fun to have. It's really fun to be able to use the Macintosh operating system and a um, and a Pac-Man machine on one system. And it's just a really nice looking computer. That's what I really like about it. And um. Okay, that's normal. Just don't have the PRAM battery installed. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice computer, to be honest. And I really think it was a cool idea. I would have totally bought this if I was an ad a rich adult back in the day. If I didn't have enough money, I, I would have tried to buy one of these, but I don't know. But it's a cool computer. I'm really happy that I decided to go for this besides a boring Mac Reforma or something. But unfortunately, the um, disk drives don't, none of the disk drives work, so it's a bit of a shame. 
All right, switching to TV mode. All right, normal. Bit of a different pattern, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and video and turn on the Pac-Man machine. Yay, it works! Woohoo! Well, that's a good sign. Please don't, please don't take down my video Bandai or the owners of Pac-Man. I mean, I've already done a video on it, so. All right, anyway, let's see the sound. Yes, there are volume buttons down here and a contrast button. All right, that's a good sign. And it seems to be working, I'm really happy. So yeah, I guess it's all clean inside, which I'm happy about. And the computer is happy about it too. He's now it's a cleaner computer. Oh shoot. But it does work, and I'm happy about that. All right, so now that that's done. Um, yeah, so now that that's done, um, we'll continue the um, rest of the video. So that'll do it for today's video. I'm really happy that I have this thing um, and I was able to clean it up really nicely and it works. And I'm really happy about that. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want me to do next. And donate to my website link in the description below. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.